Right, so I had some flaw in uh, one of my spars, so I had to uh, make a scarf joint. So I'm using the table saw to remove the bulk of it. So that's the first pass. I need to clean up the exterior and flatten it a bit more. Okay, so after that, main cut with the table saw. What's left over here, I'm using the planer to remove 97% of it. And then I'll just sand the rest flat. There's a, like a 5,000 thick piece of steel I'm using here, so I'm not touching my flat surface. Uh, there's the glue up. And this is my uh, splice I had to do, because there was a flaw in uh, one of my spar material. All right, so now I've cut the spar material this is the upper wing and now I've clamped them really well together, marked all the position of all the ribs and stuff, cut the pieces for this guy which is some kind of reinforcement for the upper wing which goes here. So I'll be gluing that now. So you have marked exactly where everybody goes. Did the plywood here. I've marked also the right and left, make sure I don't uh, make two right and left. I've also marked all the ribs. I've also marked where the doubler ends in the front of the rear spar and in the rear of the rear spar. So then uh, try and not make any mistakes. Right, one left, one right. So far, so good. All right, so now I just put some glue, of course, on both sides. A couple of pins, make sure they don't move. Made some uh, press wood scrap, make sure I got a good contact and a good pressure equal. Okay, so now I'm doing the job of uh, flattening all of the glue. I like to use this, uh, this file. It really slides over the softwood. It just doesn't add it. And when there's, it it's any of the hard epoxy, it cuts it like no tomorrow. And of course I finish uh, flattening it with uh, those amazing tools, which I love. Everybody should get some if you're going to work on a wooden airplane. Okay, I really like working with uh, this type of tool. <clears throat> it's specifically made to work with these uh, fine pencil. You just stick it inside the, the slot of the correct measurements you want, and then you can actually just slide it to make a parallel line. So this is my center line to uh, fix these guys. All right, here I have three quarters of an inch between center of the spar holding uh, fitting. So, I use a scrap of wood. I use this tool, which is really cool, very accurate. I went at three quarters, and I slid a line. So now I could either use a centering point on the drill press, so I can first, very accurate, and go here, change to the real bit, drill, and then I could use this piece of wood as a jig. I'm just gonna bolt it in place, and it's going to uh, directly be on the side of the spar. Or I could use this guy, which is also very, 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 very nice. It's a Canadian tool made by Veritas. So you put this thing in there. Well, I see this in other videos, but it's so, so nice. So once you look in there, you can be super accurate and put it in the center, remove this guy, change it to a punch, which is center punch, then you center it, small tap, and then it's going to give you a very precise center here. Then you're going to drill press, drill that, and you're ready. All right, so this is the centering point. For those that may not know it, so then I could uh, directly go on my line, 
then I could just change this to my correct 516 drill bit. This guy is also somebody I really, really like. It's just a vice grip that's made for press drill. So then it keeps your thing solid really fast. All right, so there's the setup. Now I just need to center uh, the hole there and the holes there on this center line I drew. A small hammer is uh, really nice to uh, do small adjustment in height. And... So I, uh, I had a machinist weld me a big block of steel and then using a very accurate uh, milling machine he drilled me some holes uh, at 9 degree to that plate. So now this plate I use it with the correct drill. I insert it in the hole that I pre uh, just notched a bit. I insert it back in there. I clamp the thing in there and then I can drill right through. All right. So now it's clamped and placed. Now I can just drill right through. All right. So there I confirm that everything is still very good. And it is. I just carry on with the other ones. All right, now I got a couple in there. Still a very nice tight fit. The same for these guys. Two small divots. Remove this and do it again with the uh, the block, which is at 90 degree. All right, so now a bit of varnish inside the holes and where the plate is going to be. Of course, the end grain. Oh yeah, one thing I like to do also is uh, come back with a clean uh, pipe cleaner to make sure there's no uh, puddle at the bottom of the uh, of the hole because then it becomes a hassle to uh, to drill. So for the leading edge, uh, I was just uh, cutting the piece to length, and then I had four small chamfer of 45 until I got the perfect fit. After my, uh, my epoxy varnish has dried, it's always exciting to put some bolts in there.